will be about measuring akhlaq, will be about measuring akhlaq, the development and validation with Dr. Ahmed Rushdi from Indonesia, an honor to have him with us. Bismillah rahman rahim So today's agenda, dear brothers and sisters, we start by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Then we'll do some welcoming guidelines as usual. We will share a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Rushdi. And after that, we will listen to Dr. Rushdi. And then we will have some Q&A in the end of the session. Uh, so the lecture will be probably 50 to 60 minutes. And then we have Q&As for about 30 minutes, inshallah. We will share some links and some uh, you know resources for you to benefit from in the Zoom chat. And finally, we will share some uh, Google registration forms for your feedback in the Siha, which is very important for us. And then we will just close with some uh, remarks and du'a, inshallah. All right. So the Zoom etiquette, as, as usual, dear uh, excellent brothers and sisters, feel free to always keep yourself muted. We won't allow any uh, questions, uh, live questions, but rather write your questions or reflections in the Zoom chat, and we will address them to Dr. Ahmed in the end of the session, inshallah. No recording or screenshots are allowed uh, for the session, dear brothers and sisters. In a couple of days, we will share the recording on ISAP's YouTube channel for all of you to benefit from. And if Dr. Rushdie allows us, uh, we will then share his PowerPoint slides to all of you who have registered yourself for the lecture today. You will have access to the PowerPoint. We will email it within a couple of days, inshallah. So yes, if you need any live transcriptions, feel free to press, uh, to, to press the more button in the Zoom application and request it and you will have access to it, inshallah. A little bit about ISAP's mission statement, dear brothers and sisters. ISAP tries to be an inclusive space designed to connect people with diverse backgrounds interested in the field of Islamic psychology. So we have a lot of people from different educational backgrounds, professional backgrounds, different ages, and different nationalities being part of our movement, which is amazing. We aim to disseminate knowledge, share resources, and discuss best practices in a free and accessible manner. So everything that ISAP does your excellent brothers and sisters are free of charge so that everybody, no matter which social economical background you have, can benefit from the sacred knowledge of Islamic psychology and ilm and nafs. Uh, we also want to be a platform to enable further development of people's personal and professional interests, studies and understanding of Islamic psychology within their communities and countries of origin. And that's why we have a lot of uh, local and uh, regional chapters in ISIP. Uh, we have about 24 local and regional chapters. So, so we're doing that to fill the gaps in your local communities and also to do initiatives, projects, and lectures in other languages than, than just mainly English. So we do lectures and seminars and projects and besides English and Arabic and Urdu and Bahasa Indonesian and Turkish and Bosnian and in many other languages. So the way that you can participate and be part of the ISAP movement, dear brothers and sisters, feel free to subscri subscribe to our ISAP YouTube channel where we have over 120 lectures in the field of Islamic psychology and Muslim mental health for all of you to benefit from. Feel free to share and uh, to the link to all of your you know, colleagues or family members or friends so that they can also subscribe. That will benefit the algorithm so that more people can have access to our uh, YouTube channel, inshallah. Feel free to also join uh, one of our Islamic psychology WhatsApp groups or resource sharing. Uh, both, both of these links will be shared in the Zoom chat by our, my fellow colleagues, inshallah. If you want to join ISIP, feel free to become a member by visiting our website at www.isip.foundation. And if you become a member, you will also have access to our digital library with over 1,000 resources within the field of Islamic psychology and Muslim mental health. For, a membership is free of charge, of course. If you want to join any of our task forces, or if you want to join our task force committees and organization committees for our local and regional chapters, feel free to reach out to us through email or through our WhatsApp groups. We will share our email as well in the Zoom chat, and we're, you're more than welcome to join. If you don't have an ISAP local chapter in your country or region, and you will be interested in establishing one, we will be at your service. That will be such an honor. So feel free to reach out to us through email as well, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. All right, dear brothers and sisters, let's now highlight our lecturer for today, Dr. Ahmed Rushdi. Dr. Rushdi has his master's degree and doctoral degree in Islamic psychology from UIN, Sharif Hidayatullah Jagata, currently working at the Department of Psychology, Universitas Islam Indonesia, UII, formerly assigned as chief of the Islamic Psychology Center. His area of expertise in develop, is in developing psychological scale and measurements, quantitative methodology and statistics, Islamic psychology, Tezkiyah psychology, and positive psychology. He has also written a lot of scientific journals and books with his latest book called Mental Health and Islamic Psychology Perspective, 
from paradigm framework, stress dynamics to handling depression. We're also very honored to announce that ISIP uh, wants to uh, give this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Ahmed Rushdi for your excellency, for your time and efforts, and in recognition of your continuing excellence in the field of Islamic psychology. We will email this to you, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you so much for your excellent work. We're also honored to have uh, Dr. Ahmed as part of ISIP's International Advisory Board and also our Indonesian Advisory Board. And thank you also to Sister Anissa, our task force facilitator for ISIP Indonesia for connecting us with Dr. Ahmed. Salam alaikum to your son as well, Dr. Ahmed. Mashallah. An honor wow. to have him with us as well. So yes, thank you so much for attending, dear brothers and sisters. And please forgive us for any shortcomings and make dua for us. And please fill out the short feedback form in the end. And without any further ado, further ado, let me stop sharing my screen. And then uh, Dr. Ahmed Rushdi, feel free to share your screen and feel free to start the lecture. An honor to have you with us, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Okay. Um... Okay. Can you see my share screen? Yes, uh, my share screen. Yes, we see your screen. Could you yeah. do it to, uh, um, if you could use the presentation mode so that we can, you know, see the screen and see your PowerPoints a, a little bit bigger? That would be great. Yeah, that one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah wa ala ni'matillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'at. Okay, uh, on this occasion I will talking about uh, akhlaq and mijurman. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, about akhlaq and mijurman. And I would like to say that uh, my English is not good, so I will speak slowly. I will speak word by word because my English is not good. Maybe some sometime I I make a mistake in uh, grammatical error. I mistake in uh, uh, vocabulary or in pronunciation. Uh, I I apologize for for that, but I will try to deliver my presentations. Uh, okay. All my presentations uh, come from my research. Yeah, come from my research. So uh, there is uh, a little thing, not not too much thing about akhlaq, but a little thing about akhlaq. Not not all thing about akhlaq. So uh, in my research, I doing uh, a developing measurement of akhlaq. And I see there is only two perspectives of akhlaq based on traditional uh, ulama, based on uh, classical ulama. There is only two perspectives. The first perspective is tahdibul akhlaq. This is come from uh, uh, philosophers like uh, Ibn Misbawai, Ibn Sina, yeah, and another philosophers. And the second perspective, a tazkiyah to nafs, they come from uh, Sufism. So there is any two uh, two perspective of akhlaq, and I think both of perspective have have a have a good idea. So I I continue to develop skills from both perspective. So uh, the first perspective of akhlaq is uh, tahdibul akhlaq. So a tahdibul akhlaq is talking about uh, akhlaq comes from uh, controlling your soul. So if if you can handling and controlling your your soul, you have a good regulation on your soul. You will have a good akhlaq, fadail or virtues. In uh, in positive psychology, it's called the virtues. Virtues and fadail is the same uh, same thing in 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 this perspective. Okay, so. In this perspective, akhlaq is talking about the ability to control, to, to regulate your soul. Okay. Um, so, because this is a 
regulations. Yeah, the uh, the most thing is important is uh, make your soul to be a balance between two extremes, excessiveness and deficit. So the good akhlaq in the balance, not excessive or not deficit, not excessive or ifrat in 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 tahdibul akhlaq. If excessiveness and not uh, deficit or tafrit. So the optimum character in the moderate situations in 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 in, in moderate state al wasat. This is good akhlaq. Excessiveness and uh, deficit is a bad akhlaq. Rozail in 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 the uh, in the center in in the center in the balanced state this is a good akhlaq or fadail okay this is the first perspective i will talk about this perspective after uh, i explain about uh, the definition of both of perspective and the second perspective is tazkiyah to nafs so tazkiyah to nafs the idea of tazkiyah to nafs is uh, like a polarization between madhmuma and mahmuda Good akhlaq and bad akhlaq, madmuma and mahmuda. So the idea is a, is a, like a, a opposition bet, between two two, uh, two characters. Okay, opposition between two characters. For example, ikhlas and riya, and uh, uh, kibr, kibr, arrogance and uh, humility or tawadu, kibr and tawadu. So so akhlaq have have uh, oppositions. This is uh, the second. Perspective, it does get to nafs talking about oppositions. So this is why in first type of does get to nafs is uh, purified or uh, yeah, uh, holy is purified, the first step. And the second step is actualized. So uh, so uh, does get to nafs perspective is talking about the polarization of characters. Okay, the polarization of character Mahmuda, Nazmuma, uh, Taholi, Tahali, okay, Muhlikat, um, Munjiat, there is always any oppositions of characters. Okay, we will talk about both of perspective. Um, and I only talking about my research about that. Okay. So, okay, the Tahdibul Akhlaq perspective. Okay, this is the. Uh, the best concept of tahdibul akhlaq because uh, the concept is from uh, philosophers from philosophers especially from ibn miskawai and ibn miskawai the idea from from aristotle from ibn sinan and another philosophers so they believe there is any three faculty of the soul the vegetative faculty animal faculty and rational faculty Okay. Uh, for each faculty, there is any drive, any drive of each faculty. The vegetative faculty have temptations. Okay, temptations, a shahwiya, temptations. And the animal faculty have a aggressivity or a godobia, anger. And the and the last one is intellectuality. So the drive from rational faculty is intellectuality. Three faculty, we have to control three faculty. We have to regulate of them. We have we have to regulate of three faculty of the soul. Okay, we have to regulate. We have we have to a good regulation to reach good akhlaq. Okay, if you good, if you have a good regulations. To your vegetative faculty, you will have an effa temperance. Okay, you will have effa. So effa is a, uh, come from good regulation of your temptation, your vegetative faculty. And then, if if you have a good regulation on uh, your animal faculty, yeah, you can control your uh, your aggressivity, your godobia. A nafs al -ghodobiyah. you can control, you can regulate your nafs al -ghodobiyah. you will reach a bravery, you will 
you will reach a character shajah characters bravery characters or courage bravery or courage is the same same thing and if you if you control your rational faculty yeah you, you have a good regulation of of your irrational faculty you control akal you will have a wisdom characters or hikmah so this is the basis uh, concept of tahdibul uh, akhlaq and yeah i still in project i still in working to research and to develop a skills about wisdom hikmah about courage about shajah about ifa and about sakhaw oh, and i will uh, i will show the the results okay wait a minute sorry Okay. 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 I will show the the result of my project about uh, wisdom scales of uh, measurement of of, of hikmah. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the, the this concept of the hikmah wisdom. So wisdom is uh, moderate positions, moderate state between stupidity and slyness okay so this is the 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 basis concept of of the scales so i make a measurement i make a type type of items not like a scale but multiple choice there is any five choice yeah multiple choice five choice in the scales uh one point is hikmah behavior, two point is stupidity behavior, and two point is uh, slyness behavior. So this is like a situ situational judgment test. In psychometric studies, we, uh, we have a situational judgment test. So you're doing a test, uh, you have to choose, you have to choose, okay, the, uh, the, the multiple choice and Okay, uh, if you if you have uh, many points on uh, on the hikmah, yeah, on 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 good uh, on good choice, so you will show uh, your score of hikmah is good. So this is the the technique, the the measuring technique. Okay, uh, and then this is my results. So after I. After I create the item, I generate the item, then I, I validate the item. I doing a validations. Uh, this is face validity. I test to the respondent. Are they understand the item or not understand? Okay, this is the, the results. And then I'm doing the next studies. Uh, exploratory factor analysis. And at the end of the study, I found the new dimension of the wisdoms. I, I found four dimensions of the wisdom. The first dimension is problem solving. Second dimension is learning. The affecting force is understanding. So this is the four dimension of the wisdom. Okay, this is my... Uh, and this project is not yet been published. Okay, this is still uh, improved to writing an article. This is not yet to be published. Okay, and we, do, we we also doing a validations with the another scale. Not only uh, I test the reliability, not only about the structures, but I test the scale and I do in correlation to another construct. Okay, and this is the result. And then uh, if yeah, I also I also uh, develop an if scale. Temperance. This is the basis concept of IFPA. So IFPA is a 
is a mod moderate uh, state between frigidity and following temptation. So we can make a conclusion that in Tahdibul Akhlaq perspective, there is a three polarization, there is a three polar uh, moderate, excessive, and deficit. In Tazgiyah perspective, only two uh, and only two pol polarizations, uh, Mahmuda or Madmuma. This is the different uh, different concept between Tahdibul uh, Akhlaq perspective and Tazgiyah perspective. So, this is the basic concept of IFPA and I test the scale, I generate the item, yeah, I generate the item, and yeah, reviewers check my scales, okay, we're doing a content validity, and we're doing, uh, we're doing face validity, and then we test the structures of the scales, and we found three new dimension of IFA. So IFPA, there is a three dimension of IFPA, three dimension of temporal, the first dimension is personal IFPA. We talk about personal, it's talking about your temptation on yourself, about your shahwa. So the second uh, dimension is social. This is dimension is talking about uh, your, uh, your ability to control your, your temptations in, in social dimension, in interpersonal dimensions. And the third one is financials. Financials is talking about how you use your money. Okay, is you use your money for following your temptation. Okay, or you uh, use your money for ibadah or for uh, giving. Okay, this is the three dimension of temperance. Okay, uh, and uh, and the third one is. Uh, Sakho, Sakho, uh, generosity, maybe uh, generosity, or uh, in another term, uh, philanthropic, philanthropic character. Yeah, this is same meaning. Sakho and philanthropic characters. Okay, and this is the basic concept of Sakho. So the generosity is uh, in moderate positions between takdir or bakhil, bukhul, yeah, and tabdir. West full. Well, this is um, the the balance between tabdir and bakhil. Okay, and yeah, like usually I test the the scales. I generate the item. Uh, reviewers check my item, my wording, and give a scores to my wording to my item. And this is the result. And then. Uh, we check uh, the scales to the respondents. Are they understand of the item? Are they understand of the sentences? So they give a scores, and uh, and we get a good sentences. And then uh, we're doing a exploratory factor analysis. And we're doing a continuatory factor analysis, and we found three dimension of sakha. We found the three dimension of uh, philanthropic character in Islamic psychology. Uh, the first uh, dimension is helpfulness. This is the item. Okay, helpfulness is talking about your help. You help to another people. Okay, and the second uh, second dimension is charity. Charity is talking about you donate. You giving something, you give something, material thing to another people. So helpful not only with your money, not only with material thing, maybe with, with, with your time, maybe with, with your thinking. Okay. And charity is talking about giving your money to, to donations, to giving and get another. And the third one is satisfaction. Dimension, this dimension is talking about your feeling when you give something. Okay. Uh, it's talking about uh, your feeling, your uh, intentions. Okay. So this is the Sahwa. This is Tahdibul uh, perspective. And I, uh, I'm still working on Shadja, on courage. I'm still working on, on courage. Uh, in the, and now the process, the process of, of the development on the exploratory factor analysis. Okay. 
and we're still working of the scale. Okay, we're still working on the development of the Shajia scale. Okay, this is the uh, level of our perspective. And I will show you the uh, my project of developing scales in the Zgia perspective. The Zgia perspective. Okay. okay. So the Zgia perspective is talking about the oppositions between uh, Mahmoud, Mahmoud, Mahmouda, and Mahmoud. Okay. There is any always been oppositions. If you read Kitab Tazkiyah to Nafs, you read a book about Tazkiyah to Nafs. There, uh, uh, there, there are always um, explanations about uh, akhlaqul madmuma first, akhlaqul madmuma and then akhlaqul mahmuda. Okay, and it's always like that. Okay, uh, I did build up a scale of kibur takabur, yeah, and I found two dimension of uh, takabur or kibur. I found two dimension botrol hak or gomtunas. This is. This dimension comes from hadith Rasulullah Sallallahu Yeah, al kibur batarul haq wa ghumtun nas. So I try to develop scales based on uh, statement from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I, yeah, this is the Indonesian versions, and we found two dimension of kibur batarul haq wa ghumtun nas. This is Indonesian Indonesian uh, versions, and we have a good uh, loading factors here. Okay, uh, and I already published the scales on these publications you can check on the internet and uh, this is the english versions of keyboard scales this is the english versions uh yeah this is still have a good uh, psychometric properties i think and i found when i validate the scales i found the takabur Efficacy is no relations. Tawadu and efficacy, there is any correlation. So if you do in keyboard, if you do in takabur, if you act to takabur, arrogance, yeah. Actually, you don't have good self-efficacy because you don't believe of, of yourself. So I yeah, I yeah. This is just you manipulate yourself, you manipulate another people. I can do this, I can do this, but no, you don't believe with yourself. And I found that the kabur and self-efficacy, there is no correlations. Tawabu and self-efficacy, there is a moderate to strong correlations. So if you think about this, Tawabu people, they, they always evaluate their self. They always uh, uh, see the self, the, the ability of their self. Yeah. If they think they can do it, they will believe on their self. So tawadu is important uh, because if you tawadu, you will you will evaluate yourself, you will introspection of yourself. Okay. This is the madmuma akhlaq. This is a bad akhlaq, madmuma. And then envy, hasad, envy. So envy is a, is a dangerous akhlaq because as envy uh, irrational this is this is a i think envy is disorder mental disorder why because the envy or hasad is irrational thinking they wishing that the blessing that allah has bestowed on the envied person be taken away so this is irrational so this envy is the irrational and unhealthy yeah because if you want something yeah you should try yeah you should try you should make an effort to reach what do you want not only you wish a lot of blessing from another people so i think this is irrational this is mental disorder because yeah this is irrational thinking so the opposition of asset is the atanafus al-munafasa al-munafasa is the opposition of envy so al munafasa is if you want to if you want something okay like uh, another person another another person can reach something and and you want to reach the same thing you should make an effort this is a rational action i think 
So al munafasa is healthy and envy is unhealthy. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Faliyata nafasil mutanafisun. Faliyata nafasil mutanafisun. And then another, in another ayah, fasta bikul khayrat. So, tanafus, competitiveness, is healthy. So if, if you think, if you want the uh, same thing like another person, you should make an e-word, okay? And this is good thing. This is uh, Mahmudah. Um, Atanafus competitiveness, Mahmudah, Hasad or envy is Madmumah. Okay. And this is uh, psychometric properties of Hasad. I found two dimensions of Hasad. The first dimension is hatred, hatred. And the second dimension is pleasures. So why they pleasure? For what they pleasure? The pleasure of lost of blessing on in envied persons. So they they pleasure about lost of blessing on another persons. This is pleasures. So this is not a positive affect. This is not positive emotions. The pleasures, this is the dangerous pleasures, I think. The dangerous pleasures. And the second dimension is hatred, hatred. They hate if someone reaches something. Okay. So this is two dimension of uh, envy. Okay, this is the psychometric properties. You know, I already work on EFA, exploratory effect of analysis. I test the reliability and also I confirm the model. So this is the model and the model is fit. So two dimension is fit. So two dimension is uh, descriptive the model of envy. Okay. And this is the Indonesian version of a competitiveness, a tanafos. I found two dimension of tanafos, two dimension of competitiveness. The first one is introspective and the second one is applicative. The introspective, uh, the people who have a high competitiveness, they always introspective on their self. Yeah, they always evaluate they self, they, they self. And, uh, and they do real actions, applicative. They doing real actions, okay? This is the competitiveness. They think and they actions. Not only thinking, thinking, not only wishing, they wishing, they evaluating, they introspecting themselves, and then they doing uh, real actions. Okay, this is the Tanakos, competitiveness. And this is Mahmoud. This is good akhlaq. Okay, this is the validations. I try to correlate the Tanafus scale, the Hasad scale. So Hasad and Tanafus, there is no correlations. You can see in here. Uh, okay, uh, I need uh, pointers, points. Uh, wait. Uh, yeah. Okay. See, Tanafus and Hasad. There is no correlations. This is means that hasad is not competitiveness and competitiveness is not hasad. This is different thing. Your hasad, you have an envy. So you know, you know, you're not competitive. Yeah, you are not competitive. Okay. And I found that Tanafus competitiveness have a correlation with benign envy. Benign envy is positive envy. Yeah. Malicious envy is a negative envy. So there is any positive positive correlations between Tanakos and benign envy. So this is uh, confirmed that my scales is uh, valid. Okay. So this is the uh, illustrations. Yeah, Hasad and benign envy, there is negative, negative correlations. So hasad and benign envy is oppositions, oppositions, hasad and benign envy. 
Yeah, so this is negative correlations. And hazards is not tanafos. This is, it doesn't same thing. Hazards and tanafos, uh, both of uh, variables is, is, is not same thing. Okay. Tanafos and benign NV and positive NV in, in Western perspective. Yeah, there, there is a positive correlations, moderate to high positive correlation. So Tanafos and benign NV has, have a strong correlations because they are positive yeah, actions. Okay. Uh, yeah. And again, I confirm the hazard have a strong correlation with malicious NV. Malicious NV is a negative NV. Strong correlation, 0 0.5. This is strong correlation between hazard and positive. Strong correlation between hazard and malicious NV. And competitiveness, there is no correlations. 0 0.0.07. 0 .0 this is not any correlation between Tanakos and malicious NP. So hazard is a negative behavior. Tanakos is a positive behavior. This is the conclusions. OK, this is another research. I'm doing a research between Tanakos. I take, I make models how Tanakos work. OK, and Tanakos competitiveness have an effect on your motivations. If you have a good competitiveness, Okay, you have will have a good motivations, and this is have a correlation with uh, dimension of motivations, and and one of the dimension of motivation will correlate on your uh, GPA. Okay, so this is any uh, any indirect effect, indirect effect uh, between Tanakos and GPA. Okay, academic uh, achievement. <laughs> Okay, the next scales I try to develop uh, ikhlas. ikhlas. Yeah, this is the concept. Ikhlas, the opposition of ikhlas is ria, sum'ah, ujub. Yeah, there is the opposition of ikhlas. I know you have developed ria scales and sum'ah scales, no? I not yet developed, but I already developed Ikhlas scales, but uh, not yet been published. Uh, still in improvement of the articles. So there is a, there is a, a opposition between Ikhlas and Ria. Yeah. Ikhlas come from uh, essential purpose. Yeah. Essential purpose of life, right purpose of life. And Ria come from this purpose of life. So this is the contradictions of the purpose of life. So if you fail to understand the purpose of life, this is very, very dangerous. This is why in Islamic, in Islamic teachings, the, the foundation of Islamic is Tawhid. Tawhid is talking about your purpose of life. Tawhid is about purpose of life. If you understand about Tawhid, you understand about purpose of life, and you understand about uh, everything, what you will do. Okay. The Ikhlas persons, the Ikhlas persons always understand what the purpose of every activity. They understand this is ibadah. So ibadah is every activity. Yeah. Every activity of the ikhlas person is always ibadah. And uh, and the and the other and the other hand, yeah. A real persons pretend to ibadah because ibadah is not a purpose. They pretend to ibadah, they pretend. Okay. Then the purpose is not Allah. The purpose is seeking complement. Okay, this is different. So I tried to 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 make the scales uh, to 
I try to develop skills about ikhlas. This is the Indonesian versions. And I found two dimension of ikhlas. The first dimension is purifications. A purification is talking about you should uh, consistently purify your niyah, your purpose, okay? Consistently, every time, before doing activity, you purify your niyah. This is the first dimension, talking about you always purify before you giving, before you ibadah, before you salat or psalm or fasting, you always purify your niyah, okay? You always purify it. The, the second dimension is orientation. Orientation, you, before you're doing activity, you understand your, you understand your purpose. This is orientation. So this is two dimension of ikhlas. Okay. And then gratitude. Gratitude. Okay. Uh, I already have a publications about this. You can share. You can uh, you can search. Yeah, you can search on the internet. You open Google, right on the search menu Islamic gratitude. You will find in the first in the first uh, website uh, my article. In the first in the first uh, in the first one, this is always my article. You search Islamic gratitude. You will you will find my uh, paper about uh, Islamic gratitude skills. Okay, you just type on your Google Islamic gratitude. Okay, this is uh, the process of gratitude. Okay, this is process of gratitude. Yeah, the first process is you understand that every blessing from Allah. This is the the difference between uh, Islamic gratitude and secular gratitude. The Islamic gratitude is uh, every you, every every single person in Islamic actions doing gratitude. If we're doing gratitude in Islamic perspective, they always understand every blessing is from Allah. This is different between great, the secular gratitude and Islamic gratitude. So Islamic gratitude, they are everything from Allah. A lot of money, yeah, a little money, a lot of thing, a little thing, everything from Allah. And they understand it and they satisfied with it. So in 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 uh, in the concept of gratitude based on Al-Ghazali, there is any term ma'rifatun uh, ni'mah. Ma'rifatun ni'mah, talking about they understand the ni'mah from Allah, the ma'rifatun ni'mah. And then they feel happy. Yeah. they satisfied with the blessings. So, and uh, Ibn Qayyim, al Juziyah, yeah. They said that one of the components of gratitude is uh, a shukur bil qalab. Yeah, shukur bil qalab. So gratitude with your heart. It means you feel happy. You you feel satisfied with the blessings. And then not stop only you enjoy, and not stop only you feel happy. Not stop only you feel satisfied. You should doing a consequence because a blessing from Allah. So there is any consequence of blessings. The consequence of blessing is worship, is ibadah, is amal. So if you read the Quran, there is any any surah lain shakartum la di dan aku mau lain kafartum inna adabi la shadid. Lain lain shakartum shakartum is you doing consequence, you doing ibadah because Allah give you. Because Allah give you many blessings, He's doing ibadah. La zidan nakum. Walain kafartum. If you not do anything, because Allah give you everything, you do not everything, and and you doing the oppositions, you doing maksiyah, maksiyah of Allah. He says kafartum inna adabi la shadid. Allah will give a punishment of that people. Okay. So, in Islamic concept of gratitude, there is any consequence 
of blessings. Okay, so <clears throat> I tried to uh, develop a scales, and I found two two dimensions. Uh, two dimension of of uh, gratitude. The first dimension is ex extrinsic and intrinsic. So extrinsic gratitude is talking about a consequence. Okay, consequence doing good, doing amal, uh, doing dua, doing salah, doing uh, uh, help help to other people, give a sadaqah, say hamdala. Say hamdala is one of the consequences. If you uh, get a ni'mah from Allah, you say hamdala. This is consequence. Praise Allah in every worship. This is extrinsic gratitude. It's consequence with your actions. Okay? With your real actions. Ibn Qayyim al uh, say about it in terms of uh, Ashukur bil arkan, ashukur bil arkan. So gratitude with your body, with your re real actions. Okay. So the first dimension is extrinsic in my <clears throat> in my findings, the research. And then the second dimension is intrinsic. The intrinsic is talking about uh, feelings, about enjoying, feeling, and satisfied with free ni'mah from Allah. Okay. And okay, uh, yeah, this is the, the validations I doing. Okay, this is uh, very interesting. Uh, gratitude question six. This is secular gratitude. I tried to correlate Islamic gratitude in uh, Islamic gratitude and a secular gratitude. I tried to correlate, and I found. <clears throat> Moderate uh, correlations. They, there is any correlation, but uh, in the moderate label, not in strong label, on only a moderate label between Islamic gratitude and secular gratitude. Because uh, secular gratitude is only talking about appreciations. <coughs> only talking about appreciations. And I have another scale to correlate G to G. Gratitude toward God. This is another scales. Yeah, G to G. Yeah, gratitude toward God. And I found higher correlations. I found zero point five. This is strong correlations. So this is confirmed that my scales, yeah, my measurements, is different from secular gratitude, and more close to uh, gratitude toward God. Okay. This is the uh, interesting finding. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Patience. Patience. Okay. Uh, this is the articles of the patients, and this is the the dimension of the patient. There is any four dimension of the patients. Patients with difficulties. Ibn uh, Ibn Khayyim said, sober." Anil musibah, sober anil musibah, patients with difficulties. Uh, and the second, uh, controlling anger. Yeah, sober anil godob. And the third one is controlling temptations. Yeah, shahwa, you can control your shahwa. So the the last one is consistently doing good. Uh, in uh, in 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 Nukayim said, uh, sober. The patience is consistency, consistently doing good. Asobr fitoa, and this is this is dimensions in uh, in Ibn Qayyim concept is asobr fitar kil Okay, okay. This is my findings and. I found two dimension, uh, four dimensions with the good loading factors, good reliability. This is the results. Okay. <clears throat> and then acceptance, Ridwa. Yeah, Ridwa. So this is the multi dimension of Ridwa. So this is the multi dimension of Ridwa. The first one is Ridwa uh, of test by God, Ridwa for the future, Ridwa. For the blessing by God and result for the past time. Okay, this is the multi dimension of 
di bawah. You can click the article sih. But the article still in in bahasa. Okay. You can translate in Google Translate maybe. Okay, the last ones, the last ones, peacefulness, peacefulness. Okay. And I already published this article about uh, peacefulness. This is my article, measuring peace of heart. You can type on your Google measuring peace of heart, and you will find this article. Okay. You on you you just type it in in Google. We'll find and you will uh, see the scales and you can use the scales. Okay. And uh, this concept not from tahdibul akhlaq perspective or tazkiyah perspective. This is concept I try uh, develop from Quran because there is any surah talking about peacefulness. And I explore the meaning of that I explore the meaning of the tatmainal kulub and I found two uh, two uh, dimensions. And I generate item, and I check, I test to the respondents. I I doing a survey, I doing a psychometrical test, and I found two dimensions. Okay, this is the same concept and the results. Calmness and confidence, as sukun wal yakin. I found two uh, two term in in in, in tafsir. Uh, as sukun as sakina as sukun and al yakin so this is two dimension of peacefulness so peacefulness is combinations between as sukun quietness okay quietness and not only quiet not only passive but there is any another combinations confidence confidence is active so calmness is passive confidence is active the combination of uh, both of dimension become peacefulness okay and i found two dimensions this is uh, psychometric properties and i also doing rush model summary this rush model is uh, one of the psychometric technique to validate scales and the scales have a good uh, has have a good uh, psychometric properties and i also uh, validate this scales with uh, by psychological peacefulness. So, in 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 yeah, sensibility, sensibility. This is a biopsychological measurement. Yeah, this is a biopsychological measurements, and I measure skin conductance from skin conductance. I, I can see the electricity of the skins, and and I, I can make a scores, yeah, biopsychological uh, peaceful uh, tension and, and uh, high tension and uh, low tensions. Okay, high tension and low tensions. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, a peaceful scales, that's my scales, doesn't have any correlation with the sensibility. But, but uh, the one, one of the dimension of one of the dimension of uh, my scales, calmness dimension, have correlations. Have a correlations. Yeah. Zero point one, two and one. Yeah, small correlation, but there is still any correlations. Okay. So I can make a conclusion that yeah, uh, between between uh, psychological peacefulness and biological peacefulness, there is any small correlations. Sometimes my uh, our body is tired. Sometimes, uh, okay, uh, my body is sick, sickness, yeah, tired, sickness. But our thinking, our feeling, our mind may be peaceful. So sometimes there is uh, there is always correlations, always uh, always same conditions between your body and your your mind. Okay, this is the conclusions. Okay, and if we read. Ibn Sina, Ibn Sina concept about uh, about a soul independent from body. They talk talking about soul independent from the body. If you read the floating man concept, Ibn Sina argued that soul is independent from the body. Okay, uh, this is the 
the the uh, conclusion of uh, validation of uh, peacefulness scales. This is the, the conclusions. This is a good scales. And I already published on uh, I already published the articles on the journal. You can read, you can use publication and finish. Okay. Okay, uh, this is my present. Sorry if, if I speak English not good enough. So sometimes you cannot understand what I'm talking about. Okay. And uh, maybe when you asking question to me, sometimes I can understand. My listening is not good, not good enough. But uh, I, I try, I try to, to, to deliver my presentations. Thank you very much. Uh, I give time to the um, uh, to the moderator. Thank you, thank you. Shukran. and Dr. Rushdi, thank you so much for a very thorough and very interesting lecture. I think that for all of us who are mental health professionals to do this type of, utilize this type of scale in our clinical practice will be uh, very important and very beneficial. So I really find a lot of different avenues of how we can apply your excellent work. And it's so inspiring to see how you're utilizing our tradition to create this, you know, measurements and, you know, uh, and these tools. Uh, it's so beautiful. And I hope that we all can be inspired by Dr. Rushdie's work dear participants, brothers and sisters, so that we can take our tradition, we can take the knowledge of our tradition and utilize it in different avenues uh, as clinicians or as students or scholars of Islamic psychology. Thank you so much, Dr. Rushdi, for an amazing lecture. Your English was amazing, by the way. So it was on top notch, top notch, as they say. So round of applause, round of digital applause, dear brothers and sisters for Dr. Rushdi. Thank you so much for taking your time. We have some couple of uh, questions, dear uh, doctor, that we will address to you. And brothers and sisters, feel free to ask more questions in the Zoom chat, inshallah. Uh, if you have any reflections or questions, we're happy to address them to Dr. Rushdie, inshallah. All right. Um, let's start with the first lecture uh, question here, Dr. Rushdie. So, uh, Brother Amir, he, is, uh, he actually has stated two questions. So, the first question is, for a person to have a beautiful akhlaq, it seems that he or she has to exercise control over his or her nafs. What is the essential? nature of the nafs and how is it controlled? Is nafs part of the brain that needs to be controlled? Can we grab our nafs with our hands and change it? If we cannot grab our nafs with our hands, how can we control, change, or modify it? Okay, okay. I I read the question. I try to understand. I need the time. Sorry, I need the time to read. From yeah. Amir Amin, yes? Would you like me to share the question again? Let me share it in the in the Zoom chat. So this is the question. For a beautiful for a person to have beautiful akhlaq, it seems that he or she has to exercise control over his or her nafs. Yes, that's true, right, Dr. Rashdi? If you want to have good akhlaq, yes, you should, you know, purify your nafs. You do test get the nafs. What is the central nature of the nafs? And how is it controlled? How would okay. you like to answer that part of the question? Okay, okay, I will. I will answer the first question. Uh, has to exercise control over his or her nafs. Okay, yes, yeah, we 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 can control uh, the nafs. So, if we talk about the nafs, there is any different perspective? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from from. Uh, one scholars to another scholars, there is any different perspective. Okay, I will answer based on uh, based on the philosopher's perspective. So the nafs is uh, your uh, spiritual dimensions. So your spiritual dimensions, but uh, your spiritual dimensions, your soul is not only your thinking. So your soul is is also your temptations. This is nafs, also nafs. And nafs, uh, animal faculty of, of, of your souls. There is any vegetative faculty of yours, of the souls. So we have to control yeah, the nafs. And uh, we can control the nafs with akal. Yeah. You type the second question about akal. Yeah, I agree that akal have a responsible to controlling the nafs. So the, the rational faculty or akal, uh, intellectuality, the rational faculty 
uh, should be controlled temptations and control the angels. So there's in the three naps, yeah, rational faculty, uh, animal faculty, and vegetative faculty. The rational faculty have responsible to uh, to control the temptations, control the vegetative faculty, and control the the angel or the godobia or uh, animal faculty. So the akal have responsible responsible to to uh, control the nafs and we need to exercise to gain our capability to control the nafs okay so ibn sina have uh, have have explanation about akal there is a two there is any two uh, two component of akla, uh, akal two component of akal the first component is a theoretical a theoretical akhlaq al 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 nadhariyah and the second one is al 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 there is any two component of akal so the exercise to gain our ability to control to control the nafs we have gained our knowledge okay al aql al nadhariyah theoretical Akal, theoretical intellectuality. We have gained our knowledge because knowledge is very important. And the second one, the, the second one is uh, uh, practical intellectuality or al-aql uh, al-amaliyah. We have to exercise. We have, we have to apply our knowledge. So this is how we exercise our akal and this is how we can control our nafas. Okay, this is my answer. Thank you. Mashallah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for explaining. This is a very, I mean, in a sense, as you say, different scholars have given different definition. Um, one thing that I learned in my studies, just to, you know, add to what Dr. Rushdi ex explained in an eloquent way, is that a lot of the things that we think, uh, when we think about, you know, these terminologies we utilize in Islamic psychology, for instance, nafs, aql, ruh, qalb, we tend to sometimes think about them in a very Eurocentric epistemological way, a very Western epistemological way. But this, these are different realities than the Western notions of Apple. When we speak about Western notions of Apple, we think about intellect or yeah. cognitions, and we try to place them in our head. This is not how the traditional scholars view the Apple. So we need to be very cautious, dear brothers and sisters, and all of our excellent members, and not trying to take uh, reflections that we are taught within the Western psychological notions and just apply it uh, in Islamic psychological notions because the terminologies have different definitions. First and foremost, the Western terminologies are always only settled and rooted in a horizontal level. It doesn't have the verticality, which is the divine aspect, the metaphysical aspect, or, or as Dr. Ahmed referred to, the Tawhidi aspect, right? The second aspect is that we actually believe that the aql is part of all of our systems. You know, our body has an aql. We have the aql of the body. We have the aql of the heart. We have the aql of our uh, emotions. So essentially, to just place it in the in, in the brain, it's not uh, it's not directly how we look at it. And this is from my teachers and uh, how I studied it, uh, and from the sources that I've been studying, that you have, your, your own components have an aql, has an intellect, has a rationality. And aql is not only a rational faculty, it's much more than that, even though it is a rational faculty. So I was just referring to aql, and we can take the same with nafs. And nafs has also different meanings, right? Nafs could mean soul, but nafs could also mean lower ego. And then you have different levels of your ego. You have nafs al-lawama, nafs al-lamara, nafs al-lawama, nafs al mutmaina, and beyond. So this also, the Arabic language is much more diverse and much more yani, multiplex than the uh, English vocabulary. So one word, uh, depending on how you pronounce it or which context you use it, can have different meanings. Then if we speak about grabbing our nafs, I mean, in our honestly, like grabbing, what do we mean with grabbing? You can tame it, you can control it, but to grab it, like seeing it as something physical in that sense, that's uh, that's uh, perhaps questionable, uh, Allahu Alam, I should say, but it's still important for us to not fully translate one terminology with our understanding, or I should not say translate, interpretate, I should say, 
one terminology from our understanding directly because our understanding could be influenced by, for instance, Western notions of what it means to speak about nafs or epin. We tend to, in the modern psychology, speak about nafs as something Freudian because Freud, Freud spoke about deed or the it, you know, the it as the lower self, but his it is totally different than how we, um, you know, conceptualize. Allah Jazakallah khairan, Dr. Rushdi. I just wanted to add some reflections. There is another question from Sister Sayra. Uh, Sister Sayra is ask, asking, uh, please share if this model is adopted for younger age groups. Character development attributes based on your interpretation of Islamic psychology models for Tazkiyat al nafs same for different age groups, professionals, roles, age groups, genders, and for assessment and preventive interventions. Jazakallah khairan. Okay, uh, the questions about uh, the... I will add the, the question to the chat again, uh, Dr. Rushdi, so you can see it. Okay, okay. Let's talk about... Uh, uh, okay, uh, there is any difference conditions, age group professionals, okay? Uh, can we use this model to to uh, to each of group, okay? Uh, I think uh, the concept of Tazkiya or Tahdibul uh, Akhlaq, this is a general concept, okay? This is a general concept. Um, we can use of uh, every human, but but in in uh, implementations, we need to, to operationalize, okay? For example, in measurement, in measurement, we should uh, uh, operationalize we should make uh, wording sentences. Uh, we create the item, and and the uh, items, the wording, the sentences should be compatible to the groups. Okay, so the concept is general, but implementations uh, may be different. Okay, in implementations, in measurement, in assessment, this is maybe difference. If we talk about wisdom. For the adults, for example, yeah, I have a project about uh, wisdom for the children. There is any different implementation uh, wisdom between uh, children and between adults, okay, or teenagers or youth. This is different, okay. And uh, another examples, yeah. Um, I try to um, to create. The implementations of shaja'ah, shaja ah, uh, courage for the children. Yeah, yeah. There is any different situations. Okay. There is any different situations. So, children, when uh, children show their courage, it's talk about they have uh, confidence. They want, they, they have confidence. They have courage to talk in. Okay. To talk in. To actions, okay. This is a simple, simple, uh, simple conditions, okay. But in uh, adults, the courage is different. It's talking about solve the problem, about uh, about solve the problem, about uh, to uh, to to control the problem, to control the pressures. This is a different uh, uh, situations, different. Conditions, but in the in the level of concept, there is any general uh, general concept, and with this general concept, I imp I make an implementation for the childrens. I make an implementation for the adults, for the youth, and for the children. I already uh, doing a project with the teachers from the schools, and we make a uh, group discussions talking. About how we can implement implement the concept of tahdibul akhlaq to the children. Okay, and we we found the okay the different implementations between uh, childrens and uh, and uh, adults. Maybe in the gender group there is maybe difference. Yeah, the concept of courage among women and men, male or female, maybe different. Maybe okay, so. For example, I found the, the case about religious religiousity. Okay, I 
uh, in the master degree, my thesis is talking about religiosity. And I think, okay, religiosity is different between men and women, okay? In men, we're talking about uh, Salatul Jama'ah, okay? Salatul Jama'ah, we're doing uh, 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 in the different of a woman, difference. Uh, wearing hijab, this is different uh, actions between men or and women, okay? The implementation of religious justice is different. So I think the concept is same, okay? The implementation is uh, different. The last examples, if you if you read uh, Martin Seligman project about character strength, you can read the project of uh, Martin Seligman. He is a positive psychology a positive psychology experts. He make a two questionnaires uh, for adult versions and for youth versions. They make a two questionnaires. Why? Because there is any different uh, different situation. Uh, between the group so my answer is the concept is, is uh, same but the but the implementations may be different okay this is my answer thank, thank you so much for a thorough answer dr rahman really appreciate it we have a last question inshallah uh, or we just had another question in the chat so we'll see uh, to, uh, thomas al-akbar He's asking Dr. Rushdi, Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to ask Dr. Rushdi, sometimes I felt regret that I did good things because I thought it made me losing my position and I had disadvantages to compare to the people who did wrongdoings. It happens to me often. Is there any psychological explanation for this case? Okay. Uh... Let me share the question for you again. Yeah, yeah. Here's the question. Okay, sometimes I felt a great idea. Good thing because of this. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, I felt regret that I did good thing because I thought it made me in losing positions. And I had this advantage to compare to the people who did wrongdoings. Okay, it happens to me often. Is there any psychological explanations? Okay, I feel regret. Uh, did good thing. You did good thing, and you feel regret uh, because what you're doing made you losing positions. Okay, this is okay. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, this is any mis uh, mispropose of of what you're doing. You okay? You your your propose is positions your uh, advantage advantage. Yeah, okay. So uh, I will try to explain this situation with my uh, with uh, from from this topic here yeah, from Akhla concept. Okay. I will explain based on Akhla concept, not from another uh, another theories. Okay. Uh, so your proposed advantage. So this is a problem of ikhlas. So Ria or uh, Ria or some uh, another. This is you doing something not because Allah. This is I think this is the problem. Okay. I think this is the problem. Uh, you should change your purpose, okay? Sometime, uh, sometime you lost, you losing positions, uh, you losing money, you losing uh, everything, yeah. Because you're doing good, no problem, okay? No problem, yeah. Uh, because Allah give you everything, okay? Allah give you everything. Uh, a problem if you lose your positions because you're doing good. No problem. If we doing, we, we, we if you doing something not good for advantage for the any purpose, yeah. Beside Allah, this is a problem. Okay. So in 
in the context of the questions, I try to answer based on my presentations. This is the problem on the ikhlas, okay? The ikhlas problem, I think. Okay, okay, this is my, my answers, thank you. Dr. Ahmed. To allude to your excellent answer, Brother Thomas, um, one thing I thought about is also how we appraise things. And there is in Western psychology, uh, actually a theory called appraisal theory, which is a theory that, you know, we extract our emotions from our self-evaluations, you know, estimates or appraisals of different events, and that creates specific emotions within ourselves. So, so something that we might see positive might give us happiness, something that is negative might give us negativity, but it's about how we also appraisal things, uh, you know, how and how do we interpretate things, right? As Dr. Um, Rushdie was alluding to, uh, everything comes from Allah, right? And he was speaking about ikhlas. Everything comes from Allah at the end of the day. Uh, and we should all say, always say, Alhamdulillah. If something good comes, Alhamdulillah. If something bad comes, Alhamdulillah, right? Uh, that's, that's, the, that's the trajectory. Uh, so we shouldn't sometimes appraise things that we think is bad as bad, because it could be good. You understand? Yeah. But that's easier said than done, by the way. And I work as a counselor. So when I work with my clients from Islamic psychological point of view, it's very easy that we could bypass people that are going through you know, hardship by utilizing that notion. So we need to be very gentle when we convey this message to others and even to ourselves. We shouldn't bypass our own feelings, but it's good to theoretically understand that what is bad is good, but it's beyond us to understand. But with sabr, with time, and with patience, and with ta'amun, you can come to a state of after a while understanding the hikmah of what is bad. And then what we think is good could be bad. It's all about whether we are doing it from the aspect of our lower self or the higher self. So you might think you're doing something good and then something bad comes because maybe you have done that with wrong intention, uh, subconsciously sometimes. What is your niya? What is your intention of doing good things, right? So it's also good to do good things, but to also have a good niya to it, right? But then sometimes you have a good niya and then you do good things, but then something bad happens, right? then maybe that bad thing is something good for you because it will bring you closer to Allah, perhaps. Allah, I'm just giving that as an example. So this appraisal theory that we have in West, the only, the only deficiency in the theory is that it's not Tawhidi. It doesn't have the verticality. So that's where they say, for instance, that something you, you know, appraise as good, then you feel good. But sometimes we could appraise something that is good uh, as bad and quite the opposite. Something that is bad we could appraise as good. We as Muslims should maybe look at the bad thing and appraise it as good. You understand what I'm saying? So this is very important to bring in mind. Then you're also speaking about, brother, about, for instance, somebody who does wrong and they still get good. But we don't know what they will get in Qiyamah. You know? A lot of people uh, are modern firaus and they're rich and have all the dunyavi things, but we don't know what they will get in ukhrawi things, right? So we always need to have in the appraisal theory, both the dunyavi appraisal, but then also allow it to have the ukhrawi appraisal as well, which is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. So I just wanted to add this to our excellent scholar, Dr. Rushdie's reflection. It was a great question, by the way, uh, Brother Thomas. Thank you so much. Last question, Dr. Rushdie. I'm mindful of your time. It's very late in Indonesia. All right, let's see here. Uh, question is from Brother Amir again. Measuring akhlaq via statistical techniques, how does the researcher control the overconfidence bias or exaggeration of the participants in responding to the questions? What is the benefit of measuring akhlaq? Can the results of statistical tests predict the outcome of the person in their afterlife? This is a little bit about what we spoke about now. Dr. Rushdie, what is your answer about this? A very good question from Dr. Amir. Okay, okay. I, uh, I, I would like to answer the last questions about predict, predict the afterlife, okay? Uh, nobody can predict the afterlife. Statistical method cannot predict uh, the afterlife, okay? Uh, uh, only Allah knows your condition on the afterlife. Allah, only Allah knows. And, and, and uh, who can predict the afterlife is yourself, okay? If you're doing good, okay? If you're consistent, 
you can predict your upper life. Statistical tests cannot predict everything. Yeah, this is only for a research purpose, for a, for theoretical purpose, for academic purpose. Okay, okay, this is not for predict your afterlife. Uh, statistical uh, technique to predict the the current conditions, not for the afterlife. Okay, the current condition maybe for two weeks, two two weeks or one month. Afterlife, no, only Allah know the afterlife. Okay, the, the another question is about overconfidence, bias, or exaggerations of the participants. Okay, okay, uh, this is any technique in psychometry. Okay, I will share. I will sh I will uh, share the example from uh, statistical approach. Okay, uh, sorry, I will. Uh, I need the time. Sorry. Uh, okay. While you're sharing it, let us add just that, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we will ask Dr. Rushdie for. Uh, Dr. Rushdie, will will it be possible to share your PowerPoint slide with the participants? Yeah, yeah. I will. I will, I will share. Okay, so, if you share it to us, we will email it. So, Sister Nadir, if you can share the link for the registration for all of you who have not registered to the event today. Uh, please register yourself, brothers and sisters, and we will email out the slides and also the articles that Dr. Rushdie has shared, all the research that he has done. We will email it out to all of you, inshallah. So, Sister Nadir, okay. if you can just uh, share the registration link, inshallah. Okay, I will answer the question about overconfidence of the respondents. Uh, okay, this is the technique. There is any uh, a specific technique to, to check to check the questionnaires, is the questionnaires have a high desirability? It, in our term, is is desirable. Desirable is uh, intention uh, intention of respondent to answers good answers. Yeah, to to respond with the good answers only with the good answers. So we have this technique. Okay. If you if you want to uh, more understand about this technique, you maybe we can. Uh, Make a discussions. Yeah, you can uh, you can uh, send me two emails, but I will uh, explain uh, simple explain. Okay, this is technique to uh, to to detect to detect here yeah, to detections each item is there's any item correlate to desirability. Okay, and uh, this is the group. gratitude questionnaires, the gratitude scales. I develop Islamic gratitude scales, and I. And I check is the item have a correlations with desirability, okay? And all of the item have a low correlations. The minimum, the minimum uh, correlation is uh, the minimum correlation is zero point two eight. This is the minimum. So if the correlations uh, upper the 0 0.28, your item have a problem with the desirability. So this is the technique, okay? So this is this is the answers. If you ask a question about how to control the assessment, this is the technique to control the assessment, okay? To control the item quality. Sometimes we make we make a bad item. We make not bad item, low quality item. For example, you you want to you want to develop religious skills, and you make a questionnaire. You you make item. Uh, I uh, I always salah every day. I doing pray every day. This is low quality item, but because every Muslim should answers uh, always. Okay, so the technique of of the writing the item. The question is very, very important. Okay, so how to control? We we can control uh, from first step from generate item. We should control the viewers check the item, the sentence, the wording. They check, and the last and the last uh, and the last step we check with statistical method. We correlate to desirability scale. Yeah, we can see 
the item have a high correlation with desirability scale. If there is any item have a high correlation with the desirability scale, we can uh, we can replace the item. We can uh, uh, yeah we can remove the item. Okay, this is the answer. How to control the desirability? Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan, Dr. Rahman. This will be our last last question, inshallah. Thank you so much for giving us out of your precious time, dear Dr. Rahman. I can speak for all of our members, participants, brothers and sisters. This was an amazing lecture and gave us a lot of insights. To your brothers and sisters, feel free to give digital applause or even physical applause if you wish. Thank you so much, Dr. Rahman. We hope to collaborate more with you in the future to develop more lectures with you and also to do more research with you. We're establishing an ISIPR research center, the Al-Balqi Institute of Islamic Psychological Studies and Research. So it will be an honor to have you with us, inshallah. Thank you so much. Extend our greetings to your son, by the way, to your family. And we're looking forward to work with you soon again, inshallah. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you, Sister Anissa from Indonesia, ISIP Indonesia, for connecting us with Dr. Rahman. And Indonesia is one of the leading countries in the field of Islamic psychology, brothers and sisters. So we would love to see more of your works in English as well. So we would love to translate your works, inshallah, so that we can benefit in the international community as well. Any last remarks, dear uh, Dr. Ahmed, before we end from your side? Uh... Yeah, uh, the last words <laughs> for me. Uh, if you want to join uh, or, or you want to use my uh, questionnaire, you can send me email and we can uh, make a collaborations to, to, to translate or to uh, adapt, make adaptations of our skills to your countries, to your cultures. Uh, I will, uh, I would like, uh, uh, I will, uh, enjoy to collaborate uh, with the research yeah okay 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 thank you so much we would love to do that so we're looking forward to connect with you to all our brothers and sisters who are interested in being part of translating and adapting feel free to email us at contact at isip.foundation uh, sister nadir if you can share, share the email again in the zoom chat i would really appreciate it dr ahmed is very late in indonesia so we will say mahsalam to you right now yeah. thank you so much dr ahmed we will stop the recording now inshallah um let's stop the recording